What the Tech is sponsored by. Hover.com, domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. Welcome, everybody, to What the Tech. I am your host, Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by the uh, the very sick and ill Paul Thorat. <laughs> hey. How, how you, you feeling? Doing? How you feeling, Paul? I'm getting there. Uh, to uh, start off with some rumors, is it true you'll be playing Steve Jobs in the new biopic that will be out soon? No, I'm not. A, I'm, okay. I shouldn't say it like that. I'm, I weigh too much, I think would be the way to say it. I just, I just want to make sure. People have been asking me. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Paul is sick today, actually. Paul's not feeling well. Uh, and I've been uh, feeling weird, too, because I have awful, awful allergies. So if the show sounds a little weird, <laughs> Sorry. there you go. It is not because of uh, your audio. It is because we just are very congested. Um, so today we're going to do something different on the show. Uh, we are doing listener choice. So what that means, and this is Paul's uh, genius idea, actually. I give him all the credit for this. Wow. We, After doing absolutely nothing for the past nine months, I finally came up with an idea. <laughs> Paul has contributed to the show. Uh, we will <laughs> be discussing topics that the chat room uh, chooses for us. So the chat room throws out a topic or, or throws out uh, whatever, and we will discuss that topic. Of course, we have some stuff we'll go back and forth on. Uh, we have a couple other things we want to discuss, but we want it in the uh, we want to put the show in the viewer's hands where uh, they decide what we're going to talk about. Uh, it would be funny to see what they actually say and if they are all uh, relevant topics. So I'm wondering yeah. if people are going to want us to talk about uh, linen, fine linens uh, in your house. That might be a nice topic for us to talk about on the show. I'm not sure we have fine linens in my house. Paul, are you a fan of 800 count e Egyptian cotton? Yes or no? <laughs> so this is. Uh, I'm proud to say I don't even know what that means. So, yeah. No. Uh, but uh, by the way, Paul, is there an event? There's an event. Nokia is having an event this uh, this week in yes, New York. Yes, they right? are. Are you going? No, I'm not. Were you invited? Uh, no, but I could have gone. I just um, I've got I'm so busy with this book. I've got to get it done. So it's not a good use of my time. But yeah, there is an, a launch event for the Lumia 900 happening on Friday. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting device, and we spoke about it last week. Um, about the pricing and how some people are criticizing the pricing. It seems like that all went away this week. You know, they, I, nobody's talking I, yeah. about the pricing anymore. Nobody's complaining that it's a no, little No, what they're talking about now is it's on back order. So you can complain about the price all you want, but now you can't get it. Amazing. Yep. Um, I like the device a lot. I really do. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, so again, uh, let the viewer, the viewers will be deciding what we talk about. They'll be throwing out topics. They'll be throwing mm -hmm. out some suggestions or questions, whatever it may be today on the show. If you're watching on any number of our services that we're on, Justin TV, Ustream, Stickham, whatever the case may be, you could go to our website, gfqlive.tv, and join the conversation there. We have about 50-something people in the chat right now, so it's, uh, it'll shoot up by the end of the show. So uh, go in there, hang out, ask us questions, whatever the case may be. So, Paul, I do want to ask you a question. Uh, okay. This week I was reading some news that... Um, the next generation Xbox will be debuting at E3. Uh, mm, be, Microsoft said that will not happen. That will not happen. But I was today, uh, apparently some news came out that they said the PlayStation 4, as well as the Xbox, they'll be talking about it and they'll be showing glimpses of it. Microsoft said previously we're not going to even mention it. So they said this year is all about the 360 and Connect. W does that make sense or... Well, if you think, uh, look, obviously with the Xbox 360, the goal is to make this thing last in the market as long as possible. It has experienced a resurgence in the last year or 15 months, thanks to Connect in part, at least. Um, I think a bigger part of it, frankly, is the, well, two things. Uh, they got the console right, finally, right, with the second rev of the console, you know, the new black unit, yeah, uh, which is a lot quieter and more reliable. And then they also are starting to emphasize this entertainment stuff, which is really kind of taken off. I mean, well, it's nice. The entertainment stuff has almost 
become as important as the console. And we saw that happen uh, with the PlayStation to Microsoft 3. According this week, over 50% of the time spent on 360 consoles now is, in fact, not video game I, I believe that 100%. The last time yeah. I turned on my, my console for a video game was probably a year ago. <laughs> I, and I'm going to be honest because I don't really game, but I use it for I, Netflix. I just turned off my console about 10 minutes ago, but yes, I see what you're saying. Not everybody could be a gamer like you, Paul. I, but but there is a well, whole I've group used it for of us. Both reasons. But there's a whole group of us that don't really use the console to play games. They use it to well, watch Netflix and Hulu. Honestly, I, I think it's best when you do it for both because one of the problems that Microsoft has from an entertainment standpoint is that you have to have an Xbox Live Gold account to do a lot of the stuff. Yeah. You know, to get Netflix and HBO Go and all that stuff. I mean, it's and, not expensive. It's not an expensive. But service. it's still, you know, if that's if you're not going to play video games. I mean, my answer to you might be, well, maybe you should get an Apple TV that has Netflix. It has the Apple rental and buy stuff. That stuff works great. If you're going to do video games and entertainment, the Xbox 360 today makes a lot of sense because you're going to pay for that Xbox Live Gold account to get the, you know, the the death match. Uh, yeah. And so forth. But this, I think, is the source of these rumors that maybe for the next gen, Microsoft is going to have a second version of the console that is only entertainment related and would be their... You know what we once thought they might do with the Zune or uh, their equivalent of an Apple TV, where it would be the innards of the Xbox that makes sense for just the UI and for the entertainment stuff, but you wouldn't be able to play video games on it. Yeah. But right now, What's it's it? you know it's in kind of a weird place. I mean, if you're already it paying is. for the gold account, this other stuff is just gravy on top. You know. See now, but, now this this goes into a strange situation because if if they do become more of a con, more of a entertainment unit, right? Yep. Which they probably will as the as a console evolves. Do you feel that the Xbox name suits the device? Yeah. Well, because Xbox is now attributed yeah. to gaming. Xbox started out as hardcore gaming, right? I mean, the original yeah. Xbox was a PC. It was semi-radical for the day, you know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And by um, the way, people are still using it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, it's still the go-to uh, platform, I think, for shooters and kind of the hardcore gaming stuff. Um, navigating this kind of sea, you know, between casual gamers and, and people are just purely there for entertainment, and then the hardcore gamers is going to be a little difficult. But... Uh, I understand why they would want to do it this way because Xbox is their one. I, let me just think about that. I, I think it might be their only truly successful consumer brand. So yeah, I can I can see why they would want to do that. You don't want to call that thing Windows something, right? I mean, my God, that's like the kiss of death these days. Well, yeah, I, my me. Xbox Eight. <coughs> I don't know. I don't know what they could possibly call it. I mean, but if you look at it in the console wars, I mean, the Microsoft has won. They have defeated hey, PlayStation, uh, and the last time I it, last time I said this, Xbox. the last time I said this, I got I got a bunch of emails saying that's so stupid. I bought a PlayStation. People, a lot, yes, people bought PlayStations. They bought PlayStation threes, but the console is nowhere near near on the success level as the Xbox is. As a console or as a. As as a media as an overall device, I'm talking about as a device that yeah, you could use. It, it's it's as, weird because out of the you know out of the gate. Um, when the PS3 launched uh, back in 2006, I would argue that you know they had a better interface for that kind of stuff than Microsoft did at the time, um, and they really didn't do anything with it. You know, they didn't uh, latch onto a bunch of third-party services like Microsoft eventually did. Um, it's well, starting to happen now, you know, to a slightly lesser degree. And that's what so, I mean by not being successful. By the way, I mean, I mean, yeah. as far well, as I mean, they, there were millions of them out there, but yeah, of course, a lot of people bought them, and I think the number numbers. Uh, are pretty close. I mean, it's not like Microsoft that's blown them out of the water, but as far as a device, yeah, worldwide numbers, they're, they're pretty close. As far as a, de a, a device that, that you could use for media, uh, that you could use for gaming, the Xbox is the console to go to, and I feel that the interface is a lot easier to understand for an average person. And you could see it by, by with the fact that you could watch television on that device now. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have an Xbox out in the den that, we don't use with a controller. We just use that newer, smaller, black uh, hand control. I'm sorry, uh, remote control. And um, it works, you know, very well like that. It's, it's, a, it's basically a front end for TV and entertainment services. So we can access HBO Go on there now. We can access the Fios on demand stuff and live TV. We can access Netflix. You know, I, I think the only thing that's missing to give it that true one-to-one, -one, you know, or 
true alternative status to the Apple TV mm -hmm. is they don't have a service that's at the level of what Apple offers. I mean, there's the Zoom stuff, which offers video renting and, and purchasing for movies uh, and TV shows, actually. Well, the Apple which, TV is lacking. I mean, currently. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, I, I, you know, we, we use the Apple TV fairly regularly, I have to say. I mean, but, but don't you feel that it's, it's lacking on what it possibly could be? I mean, we, we could all see what it will well, it's, eventually it's, become, it's right? Always, it always has been, right? I mean, um, it always has been lacking in some ways, right? I mean, uh, it, it seems like this thing that's on, poised on the edge of greatness always. But I still choose to go to it. It's, it's, uh, it's a pretty decent experience. Um, you know, Xbox is close. But I think if, if Xbox had Amazon, and Amazon has a reasonable collection of uh, purchasable and rentable content uh, in, uh, in, in the streaming service as well. Um, that, you know, that might put it over the top, but leaving aside the fact that, of course, Microsoft charges for the Xbox Live Gold account, which I think is a mistake for people who aren't gaming. So you think it all, the entire thing should be free and the services obviously will cost something? Look, you're already paying for HBO. You're already paying for Comcast or Fios. You're already paying for Netflix. Why am I paying for it again on, for the right to use it on the Xbox? I have three other devices in my living room, all that can access Netflix. For free. Uh, yes. I mean, I mean uh, so it's why, would I, why would I pay again for Netflix? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're right in that sense. But I guess they, they're doing it because you're, you're for the gaming aspect, that's why you pay. And these are perks. They still see it I as a so, gaming device. They still device. require it. I mean, it's, you know, if you go to the Xbox, you know, there, there, believe it or not, there are some Microsoft people out there and they want to do the Microsoft thing. And the Xbox is that kind of obvious Microsoft alternative. They don't want to play games. You know, looking at like 60 to 100 bucks a year or whatever it is for Xbox Live Gold. Um, Kind of a weird thing to have to pay when you can get that stuff for free somewhere else. Yeah. Because there's nothing on the Xbox. I mean, other than Zoom, which let's face it, nobody seems to be particularly interested in. Even though What I honestly thought this year would be really dominant are these Google TV televisions that they signed all these agreements with. Right. And we have not really seen that 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 being deployed yet. I mean we're we're maybe in that's a holiday season thing though. You know. But but you know what now? At this point, I do not think – at first, I, I said this is going to really dominate the industry when it comes to these uh, these devices. You know, like we have Roku and we have Google TV yep. and we have Apple TV. I really said that these – being integrated in the television could possibly dominate the industry and it will kind of get people used to using these services. But I don't, I don't think it's necessary anymore. I mean, I, I don't know – I don't know if I trust the television manufacturers to make yeah. it work properly. The other thing that I think speaks against Google TV, even if they, you know, get it right, whatever that means, is that by sort of basing it on Android and, and making it a, a fairly capable but also complex thing, they're kind of pushing themselves out of this market. You know, Google is a very engineering driven company. They, they are engineers, think like engineers and all that. Android is very much an engineering product and so is Google TV. You know, um, the Apple TV is simple. You know, even the Xbox... 360 is simple today, you know, with that new dashboard they have and all the entertainment offerings. I mean, it's very clear how it works. I mean, it's not hard to use. Um, Google TV might just be a little too much. For the overall user, I mean, for the... I think so. You know, one of the big complaints, I, and I don't know, it, it amuses me in some ways, and uh, people will say, you know, how come there isn't a, a web browser on the Xbox 360? You know, I don't know why, but there isn't. Um, there is one on the Google TV, but nobody wants Google TV. So maybe just basic web browsing is not as big of a deal. By the way, I use the web browser on Google TV, and it's an awful, awful experience, <laughs> and it barely works. If you pull up a website that has is flash base in any way yeah, or yeah. has any type of flash, the entire thing just crashes. And it's, it's a great experience. But is it, is it, the, is it the, the hardware that it's on, or is it... The this actual software. No, this is what happens when you, you know, look at what, all these companies are guilty. This Apple does this all the time. You know, they don't test things enough internally, and they release it early. I, I think with Google, because of their nature as an online services company, we sort of accept that, like lemmings. You know, um, I want, you know, remember before Gmail came out years and years ago. I want Gmail. I want Gmail. I want Gmail. You know, Gmail's not ready. It's okay. Like I don't care. I want it. You know, I, I think that once you become accustomed to that kind of culture at Google, you know, they just start releasing stuff early. They can call it a preview or a beta or whatever, but it's just out there like 
a regular service would be. Let, let's let's run down the list. The list, right? They bought, uh, I think it was Gizmo Five, which was the voice over IP service, which was a really good service. They yeah. bought them uh, to kind of integrate Google Talk and Google Voice, right, into this one thing. And we have not seen it being utilized fully. There's still uh, the desktop application for Google. I guess voice, their vo it's Google Talk, right? Or Google Voice, yeah. what are they calling uh, it? Which one? There's two services. There's Google Talk. Google Talk is the uh, IM client. Which, Google Voice is what used to be Grand Central, the uh, yeah. you know, voice, voicemail. But, but what do they do with Gizmo 5? What do they, I think it's in Google Talk, right? It's integrated in Google Talk, the, the oh, actual I voice over IP. I don't know, I'm sorry. Like I could call you with, yeah, the, with, with Google the Talk. with Google Talk. I, these things are all blurring, so which, I'm not really sure. Exactly, and there should be no confusion on this thing. I, what I think they should have done is had Google Voice, had a voice over IP service uh, where you could take calls and make phone calls from the computer and from the phone and kind of united the entire thing, but that makes way too much sense, right? And also do video, by the way. <laughs> well, no, you know what? It's not that it makes too much sense. They're going to get there. Th th that will all happen five years from now. But see, in the, in the interim, we suffer from this very Google-centric kind of view of the world where... We, they'll just throw it out there. And oh, there's Google, and, Google Chat, Google you know, Voice, Google Talk, and Google Hangout. It's one. Yeah. It's it's the same well, thing. To, to be fair to Google and to Apple too, who does the same thing really. Um, you know the the flip side of this coin, of course, is Microsoft, which takes forever to release products. So you know Microsoft releases Windows on this three year whack, and I always keep saying like, you know, you gotta you gotta do a little faster on this thing. You gotta you have to really think about redoing the way you make Windows. You know, but they I don't yeah. see it happening. I mean, I think they just they're just slow. So. You know, I can complain that Google's too fast, and I think they are in some ways. But on the flip side, I think Microsoft is also too slow. So too slow. Well, Microsoft, maybe there's some happy meeting. Microsoft purchased Skype, and we have not seen anything. I know. Talk about slow, right? I, I, you know, the the remember the Windows Phone client was going to be out before the end of the year. Yeah. Then it was going to be out in beta by the end. Well, then you know, CES obviously CES. Well, maybe at Mobile World Congress, and then you know, like the beta comes out, and like when's it going to come out? You know, is it going to come out at Tech yet? Is it going to come out in time? You know, nobody knows. I mean, one of nobody. the first times you came on the show, Paul, was when the acquisition happened, when Microsoft yeah. uh, acquired Skype, and we were yeah. we were speculating on what they would have done, and I said, well, what they will probably do is put the technology in all their devices. So they'll still have Microsoft Live, mm. uh, their, their track client, the voice over IP client, and they would integrate Skype because the technology is what's valuable to Skype, <laughs> not the name. You know, that's another example of a disaster too because uh, Skype, which is what we're using to do the podcast, is great for video chats and so forth. It's terrible for text chats. It's Awful. terrible. Awful. No, no I, um, I can't Windows even Windows Live it. Messenger is great for text chats, but it's like terrible for everything else. In fact, almost everything else about Windows Live Messenger I hate. If I could turn off everything in that program, I would. Um, I wish Windows Live Messenger was more like Google Talk, and by that I mean like stripped down to almost nothing. Well, how because about, most of the stuff in there is crap. Well, how about the technology that they're using on the Xbox for chat? For chat. Which is awful. <laughs> no, I <laughs> yes. mean, it really is. you got to pause yeah, yeah. so someone else could speak. I mean, it's not, it's not a, a, a... It's like talking on a World War II era field phone. <laughs> That's you exactly know? what it's like. Over. But they could I'm have integrated it a strike. strike. They could have integrated Skype in that, right? And it would work phenomenal. Well, and they will. They, will, they will, yes. And they, they will. Actually, I think they have, in, at least partially. Um, of course they will, but just like in Google. You know, in other words, this stuff will all happen. Uh, Microsoft released a limited uh, tech preview version of the next version of Microsoft Office to some of its closest partners, and there is not a single hint of Skype in there anywhere. Yeah. Um, we have to think that when, when Office is shipped sometime later this year, that some Skype... Stuff will be built. It has to be. But, you know, here we are uh, about a year, I guess, after they announced. A this little after a year. Uh, I, when, what, I think it was. When did the acquisition? I think it was 2011. No. Was it 2011 or was it late 2010? Yeah, I don't even remember. I mean, it didn't get regulatory approval until much later in the year. But, you know, it's, in, it's incredible to me to even contemplate that these people weren't working on stuff before it was okay. I mean, sure. and I don't mean writing code, but at least figuring out where it made sense to, you know. Uh, but maybe, you know what, maybe that. this is what people want, though. I'm, let, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm all for the integration. But yeah. sometimes some people might be saying, no, let's keep the two products totally separate. Let's not integrate them. And, and they don't have see, to. I think you're going to see both. I, I mean, I, they don't have know. to. Microsoft... Make make it a Microsoft product of the Skype client. I mean, but integrate the the technology that is used in your other services because the Skype technology the, is phenomenal. Some of the wonders we can look forward to are the Skype client that has a ribbon interface. Oh yeah, <laughs> the you know the Metro version of the Skype app. And the like, Metro this gonna, UI. There's got to be all this awful stuff coming, but 
Um, I, hopefully they leave the Skype clients, you know, intact. I mean, and I'm sure they will keep making, you know, the Mac version and so forth yeah. and the mobile client versions. But I, I think the, the key to this and the reason they wanted to do this wasn't to put the ribbon on the, this is the Skype. That would have been a good April Fool's joke, by the way. You know, I could put up a screenshot of Skype with a ribbon interface. But anyway, um, but was rather to integrate that technology deeply into its core products, you know, Windows, Xbox, Office. Yeah. And I think that is what we're going to see. Uh, I do want to go on with this, Paul, but we need to thank our sponsor. And that is uh, Hover.com. Domain names made simple. They are, um, they are my domain company that I choose. Uh, I buy all my domains at Hover. I have over 200 domains currently at Hover. So uh, I've become a uh, domain addict. And the reason why I buy so many domains is because they make it so easy to buy your domain at Hover. Uh, right here is the Hover website uh, pulled up. They make it extremely easy to buy your domain, check out. There's no upsell. Private registration is included in the price. So you don't have to pay another 6 to $11 to get private registration. Certified domains like those other guys offer. Everything's involved, included in the price. So you're not getting tricked in, at the end when you're buying one domain and you check out. And it's like $32 for one domain. Domain. Did you hear the New York come out right there, Paul? Dollars? <laughs> dollars. Have you been drinking, Andrew? No, no. Dollars and per percent. Dollars. And percent. I can't say percent properly. It's good uh, stuff. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Uh, Paul's going to be saying era by the end of the show. <laughs> Just a whole East Coast thing. But they make it extremely easy for you to buy your domain. They make it extremely easy for you to check out. And there's no upsell. Um, one thing that they also do is .co's. I'm a big fan of .co. Uh, domain names. And the reason why is that many of these dot coms are out, they're sold. Uh, you can't get the dot com that you want, but the dot co is still available. And it's a domain name, it's a domain extension that I really think is going to be successful uh, in the coming years when the dot coms really run out. So start getting your dot co's. You can buy it at gfq.harvard.com. You get 10% off at, at checkout, or you could use promo code WTT upon checkout uh, and get the 10% off, and the credit goes to what the tech. Uh, thank you, Hover. That's Hover.com. So, Paul, uh, I was talking to you before, and the, the audience has been asking what this little thing is up here. Uh, Wait, where sorry. is it? Right right there. That that thing. The little cable-looking thing? No, no, Pink no. Cable. Do you see that? Do you oh, see the IA. Thing? I'm sorry. Yes. The IAIB. Uh, I've been, people are asking me what the IAIB is. And the Explain I yourself, sir. I will, sir. I will. Uh, people are demanding answers, and I will give you answers. Uh, the IAIB is the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Uh, I am the co-founder of the IAIB, and the purpose of the IAIB, and look look who's right on there, Paul. Look at that. It's you. <laughs> Jeez. You're right looking there. Good. Looking good. Looking good with your uh, hand on your forehead and uh, thinking, obviously, you're, you're thinking. So this is a past episode of ours. Uh, as I said, I'm the co-founder of the IAIB, and the IAIB is... A organization where it unites all internet broadcasters. So if you do a podcast, you do a live show, we want this to be the community that you go to. We, we are going to offer, um, we offer a forum actually to uh, our members and our members could chat in there, promote what they're doing, get advice about uh, their broadcast. They could uh, meet other people. So it's pretty much a giant community. You know, the, the broadcast society, the, the national... Um, Terrestrial broadcasters have the NAB, and internet broadcasters now have the IAIB. Uh, and ibroadcastnetwork.org is the website, and uh, I am a co-founder of it. Um, the other co-founder is uh, Spencer Coburn. Some of you may know Spencer from his show on the GFK Network, The Bald Truth. Uh, he um, knows uh, how to cultivate a community. He has a number of forums uh online and uh we have started this organization and uh hopefully it will continue to grow and it'll cultivate the uh internet broadcasting uh just i guess community because it, it kind of needs it it kind of needs a um it, it to be brought together in my opinion need a trade union yes a tra I, i'm going to unionize and 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 <laughs> demand money from these advertisers no but that's another thing that's actually going to work in the favor of our members is that advertisers will eventually start using our website as a uh, as a filter to find out who is the one to advertise with you know kind of to select the 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 good from the bad and we do select you know we, not everybody gets in we do a, uh, a screening to see if you get in uh we're the hub of all things internet broadcasting uh to put it simple simply put it 
Uh, so that is uh, the IAIB, and I guess that answers all the questions about it. Uh, there's going to be more information, of course. We're going to be doing a show uh, here on the network, uh, eventually talking about the IAIB. But this is just, we just launched about a couple of days ago. And we have 50 plus members currently. I think it's been like three days that we've opened up registration. We're in beta right now. We're like a Google, Paul. <laughs> we're like Google. You are, you are like yeah. Google. Yeah, we're like Google. We, we are in beta right now and accepting beta members. So we've gone through second phase acceptance right now. So wow. second group of people are coming in, but it's a, it's a whole thing, Paul. And my entire day is, is just, I was thinking you weren't busy enough already. Yeah, no, I'm not busy at all, actually. And that's what people are saying. When do you have the time? I don't know. I don't know. When, when Paul, when do you have the time to play video games, Paul? That see, that's, that's the question. Cause you're a busy guy, right? It's almost like the same thing. You find the time. It's, you know, you know how you have a, um, like a rat in a maze and you uh, yeah. reward them when they do stuff. Yeah. I treat video games in the same way. It's like a, a reward <laughs> for, for accomplishing certain uh, milestones in writing. You know, what's funny. I, I've, you know, I founded the organization and there's so many people in there now where they're giving me advice on things. Like I had no idea BlackBerry had a podcast group. Yeah. Like I had no idea BlackBerry had a pot, like a built in app for podcasters. Like how Microsoft sure. has Zoom uh, and Apple has iTunes. BlackBerry has their own thing. And I had no clue. Until somebody posted it. So it's a lot of good information there. Hmm. Uh, and that, that is the uh, IIB portion of the show. At this point, Paul, yes. I, I want to go into Windows Phone for a little bit. And then we'll, we'll jump mm -hmm. into something else. Actually, did you see uh, Instagram got released for Android today? Oh, it did. Yeah, yes. I heard it was coming. So, so now more people could take great photos and just distort the <sighs> hell out of them and make them into awful photos. You know, I'm not a big fan of Instagram per se. Um, I played around with it a few years back when I first hit the iPhone. But you know what effect I really do like? And maybe this is part of Instagram. I'm not even sure. But there's something called tilt shift where you can take a picture of a, you know, like a landscape or a building or something out in the distance. Uh -huh. And then you apply this effect to it. And it makes it look like the building or whatever the object is in the middle of it. Like it's like a tiny thing. It looks like a miniature. Is that an Instagram or no? I'm not sure. But there are, there are products or, you know, mobile products for this that will take your pictures that you take on a mobile device and turn them into these tilt shift versions. If you've ever seen the TV show Sherlock, uh, the beginning opening sequence of that show has all these scenes of London and they're done in tilt shift. So it looks like you're looking at a miniature version of you know, Piccadilly Square or whatever the locations yeah. are. It's cool, it's a, it's a really neat effect. But you know, the, the, you know, I want the sepia tone, I want it to look like a Polaroid. I want it to look like, you know, there's a reason we don't like pictures from the 1970s. But it's, it's, they look it, like seems crowd, like, you know? it seems like this is what we do, right? We take something like, yeah. like let's say, phone calls, right? We don't sure. want to talk to you. We want to text. It's almost like we've gone backwards with certain things. We well, don't yes, want our picture because, to look. That's because our phones don't <laughs> yeah. work well as phones. But we don't want our picture to look as good as it can. We want to distort it and, and put, you know, I, I, awful filters. Just, I, people think uh, this is them being creative, you know, I... And the way to be creative is to be like everyone else, as you know. Absolutely. I, I don't know. I, I just I, I think everyone has played around with whatever it is, a photo editor where you can apply the sepia tone or a movie editor where you can do a transition or uh, a page publishing program where you can make what looks like a ransom note with all the different fonts. You know, you do that once and then you kind of grow up and you move on. I, I Instagram to me is a curiosity, but I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Yeah. I think it's a little overdone, uh, personally. Well, but. well, they released the iOS uh, the uh, iOS app a while ago, and it's been extremely successful. And they yeah. waited this entire time to go on Android, which I find very interesting on why they waited so long. Is it a free or paid app? It's a free app. It's a okay. totally free app. But I downloaded it, and now like I'm like, hey, you know what? I really don't understand why people use it. Because <laughs> my wife uses it all the time, and I and it drives me nuts because she has these great photos. She takes them, and then she'll like mess them up. People are, are captivated by apps, whether they're useful or not. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to think. I, I have, um, I don't know which ones they are. I, there are a couple of Instagram clones, you know, that they have on Windows Phone. Instacam, I guess, is one. You know, but it's like, I, eh, you know, I don't know. I don't get it, personally. But I don't get it either. So with Windows Phone, I want, I want to talk about this. This is yes. what I wanted to get to. Uh, what is their marketing tactic going to be when it comes, when this phone comes out? Because you really don't see too many commercials and you don't see too much buzz coming from Microsoft themselves as far as marketing goes with this phone. Um, with what phone? With, 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 with Windows Phone in general. You haven't seen that much. 
Well, you know what? It's it's all starting now. I mean, uh, I mean, are they going to are they going to start doing it now? Because this is their flagship. This yes, device. It, right. So um, back in December, I came across some Microsoft documentation that talked about the many hundreds of millions of dollars they were going to spend collectively marketing Windows Phone. Half of which I think was uh, going toward the Lumia 900 alone. Uh, the money was coming from Microsoft and from the hardware makers like Nokia, LG, and Samsung, but also from the wireless carriers, and. What I've heard from people at at and is that internally, this phone is getting a much bigger push than any phone has ever gotten on this network, including the iPhone. And that uh, may, and I've supposed, and I think we might have talked about this last week, that one of the reasons why the price is so low is that some of those marketing dollars are going into subsidizing the phone somewhat mm -hmm. so that it can be less expensive, even though it is a flagship phone. Yeah. And uh, more people will get it. But, you know, if you go into an at and store, you talk to at and people now, you'll see that a lot of them have Lumia 900s. You'll find out that they're suddenly very excited about Windows Phone, whereas before they might have steered you towards something else. And uh, there's been kind of a sea change over there. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I, you know, it seems like in the short life, lifetime of Windows Phone, there's always going to there's always something coming down the pike that's going to make us turn the, you know, turn this thing around. Yeah. Um, whether it was going to be you know the the cut and paste update in early 2011 or you know the Mango release in late 2011 or now we have this uh, you know the Tango release in the Lumia 900 and um, oh, well, maybe it'll be Windows Phone 8 in the fall. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, all I can say is uh, they're serious. I know they're serious about marketing it now. Um, and we'll see what happens. But I, I, I legitimately prefer it. I use a Windows Phone. I will continue using Windows Phone. I mean, I really do prefer it over Android by far and over the iPhone as well. I think this is going to be the device where the, the average person starts buying. Because <laughs> it's 99 bucks. It's a nice-looking device. I mean, it's, it's made... Beautifully, yeah. Uh, but I hope so. I I'm really curious on when they pick this device up, what they're gonna think of it compared to an iPhone, because we're we're kind of used to this yeah. standard UI, right, where the icons are right there, and you click on the icon, and then it opens up the app, and you well, just go you know, back side way, to uh, side up Windows, and down. Windows Phone does the same thing. I mean, you can click on the tile and open an app. I mean, it's just you know, if you want, you yeah, can you it. can. But I mean, the look of it is totally different for Windows Phone. When you pick up a Windows Phone, you cannot mistake it for anything else. Yeah, yeah. And, and they deserve some credit for that because I think Android obviously did a lot of copying. But then on the other hand, you've created something that's so different from everything else, it may be harder for people to pick up too. Yeah, because a uh, lot of people don't – and we joke about it a lot on the show where um, there was a whole t – there's a whole group of people that just call all these phones iPhones. Oh, and, and, you know, there's a whole lawsuit with Samsung because, you know, the yeah. iPhone is saying that it's, it resembles the iPhone way too much. And you would think, like, no, it doesn't. It, it, it's, it's a totally different phone. But to many people – and I have a relative that I was on my phone. They go, what is that, an iPhone? And they thought – I think they think that this thing is an iPhone. And when they see these boxes, I think they think yeah. it's an iPhone. You sure. do not get that with Windows Phone. You do not feel that it is an iPhone or it's an Android phone. It is its own thing. And I'm right. curious on how – the mainstream, the average person is going to perceive it or if they're going to be able to adjust to it. I think it's a very simple UI to learn, but are they going to find it I think it it's simple? going to be fine, but the first hurdle has always been the wireless carriers. You know, you go into the store and uh, even if you knew about it and wanted to see one, they would try to steer you away from it. And that's, I mean, I'm sorry, that's like the final nail in the coffin. You can't, can't get by that, you know, you have a problem. So hopefully now with the 900, it's going to change at AT&T and hopefully we'll see that phone and other phones throughout the year pop up on other carriers, uh, not just here in the United States, but elsewhere in the world. And uh, and we'll see. I, I think that part of the success of Windows Phone is going to be tied to Nokia uh, going to China and with uh, Windows Phone being released in a localized version for China that has integration bits that make sense for China. I think that's a big deal. But, you know, we've been sort of on the cusp of this. Oh, yeah, don't worry. We're going to turn the corner anytime now ever since this thing has come out. So I, I can't. And, and I think the success of this device will also fall into eventually Verizon getting it. Yes. You know, that this is the whole thing. And it's a bizarre thing on how Verizon is not really into the Windows phone thing. They had well, this feud happening for whatever reason. You know, uh, one, of, one of the stinks I made recently was that AT&T is Microsoft's premier partner, right, for Windows phone. Yeah. They have been since the launch of the original device. They uh, talked this up again at the launch of Windows phone 7.5 last year. And, you know, I asked them uh, a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know, what, is, what does this mean exactly? I mean, you know, they're your premier partner, but they're also holding back software updates for, you know, existing customers. I mean, it's kind of a weird dichotomy here. And, you know, there's no formal definition of what that means. I mean, so 
the one, I mean, the two things that I think have set AT&T apart from the other wireless carriers so far is that uh, at launch and also at the launch of 7.5 last year, AT&T, uh, coincidentally or not, had more handsets on offer than the other companies. And then this year, they're the first to have LTE and they apparently have a, nobody wants to discuss this, but they apparently have an exclusive time frame where only they can offer LTE Windows phones. Three months, four months, six months, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. But I think that that is what Verizon's upset with and that once that restriction goes away, you know, you'll see some more stuff happen on Verizon. Okay. The only problem is if we're talking six months. That's a long time. You, that's then Windows you, Phone 8. Windows Phone 8, exactly. And then what yeah. happens then? Yep. You know, that... I, and we have we we haven't heard anything about uh, this device being upgradable to Windows Phone Eight, right? <laughs> Just rumors. Yeah. Just rumors. I mean, this is, it's a beautiful device. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Let me see if I yeah. can pull it up. Yeah. Uh, Lumia nine hundred. I mean, it's a really really nice device. People yeah. are actually doing they're doing the um, the verses the iPhone 4s. I don't know. PC Mag did it. Okay. I don't know what happened. I don't know what the results were. But it has I assume the Lumia emasculated it, but I didn't read it. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things like, uh, oh, you know, the iPhone has more apps, you know, like, yeah, it does. So what? I mean, I, you know. But the really, apps will come, though. I mean, and also it, it's really I, not apps, about the number. I, you know what? Largely, they're already there. I, I, I don't really get the fixation on apps. I mean, I don't really use a lot of apps personally. Maybe that's part of the problem, but I don't know. The uh, the cat and the dog are fighting. By the way, Paul. I thought I heard a squeaky sound. Yeah, that's the cat and that was the dog screaming that the cat yeah. is beating him up. There he goes. You hear that? Yeah, the cat will always win this fight. I don't understand what the dog's problem is. I mean, <laughs> just leave the cat alone. You're getting your your ass handed to you. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think it's a, I think it's a great device. But what does this mean for uh, the the other partners though? You know, we're looking at we have other. Yeah. Windows Phone partners, and if the Lumia is the premier phone and Microsoft is treating it like the premier phone, I could imagine HTC and, and these other phones getting a little upset at the uh, the love that Nokia is getting. But it's, I guess it's accept, expected. Well, I mean, now. imagine another scenario, though, right? What, what if um, what if the Nokia phones actually start selling pretty well? You know, what if they do well in the market? Yeah. I think that would behoove uh, Samsung and LG and others to make better phones, you know? I mean, I think a lot of the stuff we've seen so far, I mean, lackluster is a bit stronger. I mean, but what makes it a better phone? Are we, we're, nobody's really talking about the hardware because I think you get that hardware anywhere, right? Well, the hardware I, that's I, well, in not with phones. the Lumia, though. I mean, I think that what sets the Lumia, well, there's two things to set it apart. The, the right? look of it, really. It's the, yeah, the, the materials they use and the, the type of glass they have in the front, uh, I think, are unique to them. And they've done a good job. In fact, I think that design is so beautiful. Uh, I would be very upset if uh, Nokia did not come out with a Windows 8 tablet that used the same form factor, you know, colors, same look and feel, but just bigger. It would, would be beautiful. Um, but the other thing that sets Nokia apart is some of the software and the services, right? Some of the stuff that's unique that they offer. They yeah. have their own map solution. Uh, they have their own music and uh, uh, app and some other stuff. Uh, these things, by all accounts, and you know, again, I don't have one yet, but I hope to build a report soon, whether they're good or not. But what I've heard is that they're very good, and they're things that set the Nokia phones apart from the others. You know, and that's a touchy area, um, but you know, there's nothing stopping Samsung or LG from putting their own stuff on there, and certainly they do now. AT and T puts their own stuff on. What there, they, what is what does LG and Vera and uh, and the other guys put put on? <laughs> yeah, so let me look. The I have a Samsung, so. Um, I, I remove all the stuff from the phone, but you can get it in the marketplace. So when you go to the marketplace on a phone, there's an AT&T section or one for your wireless carrier. And then there's one for your handset maker as well. And so you can go and see what they have. So there's a there's a news app. There's a video call app. There's a wireless manager. There's a, an app called Tango, which is unrelated to the Windows Phone software. It's kind of a uh, kind of like an instant messaging or a Skype type app, I guess. There's an RSS reader. There's a photo studio app, which I assume is photo editing and whatnot. A camera app, you know, there's all Rubik's Cube, some games and stuff, you know. So this is stuff, stuff like that. I mean, it, none of this, I don't look at any of this and think, wow, I got to have that. You know, and actually yeah. I remove all of it from my phone. But the, this is one of the ways that Samsung can try to differentiate because these apps won't be available to LG owners or Nokia owners or whatever. And they're not really allowed to modify the user interface like they were able to do on Windows Mobile. 
You can't at all. I mean, well, with Windows yeah. Mobile, what did they really do? That it was HTC that really modified the user interface. Well, they replaced it. They, they mean, totally almost, replaced they it. The front end of it, anyway. Yeah. And they made it functional. <laughs> yes, they did. I mean, that was that was that's why they did it. The HTC was really successful at making that phone somewhat functional, where the other guys couldn't. I mean, it's a really awful UI when you when you strip it down, but. You really oh, yes. you don't have yes, that yes. feel with Windows Phone Seven, or or you won't get that feel with Windows Phone Eight either. Right. I mean that's that's another thing. People want to know um, any news on the beta and 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 what is, what UI changes will be implemented in Windows Phone Eight. Has there been anything released yet, or? No, uh, they haven't said, and and I can't really i I can't really speak to that uh, publicly yet. But, okay. Um, I think the stuff that we know, uh, the stuff that's been public so far, is that. It will be based on the core of Windows 8, so there'll be some similarities from a UI perspective. Um, they're going to make it more of a uh, uh, a device that doesn't have to be tethered to the PC at all, right? Everything will be able to be done over the air, much like the iPhone 4S. Um, and I guess the iPad 2 might have started that or whatever. Maybe it was iOS 5 when they started that. Yeah. Um, where you don't need a PC. Um, so that suggests that there'll be some improvements to the back-end services as well because right now, for example, if you want to sync photos uh, over the air on this thing, you can only sync low-quality photos up SkyDrive. You can't sync full-quality photos. So obviously that's something that might be coming uh, as part of Windows Phone 8. How, how much space do you get with SkyDrive currently? 25 gigabytes. You know, I find it amazing that this uh, the, Google, the Google Drive thing that they're talking about now that possibly will be getting released in, in the coming weeks. Yep. Uh, only 5 gigs. I found that very strange by them. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. So Windows uh, or SkyDrive is 25 gigs, but it's very hard to access, right? You'd be hard-pressed to fill that thing up with 25 yeah. gigs of stuff. Nobody does. Um, there are third-party utilities you can add to Windows that work pretty well along those lines. But, you know, Windows Phone, I mean, you, you could take pictures for the rest of your life, and they're not going <laughs> to fill up 25 gigs. But Microsoft is going to be moving to a paid tier model we can buy additional storage. And of course, this thing is going to be deeply integrated with Windows 8. And um, I think it's going to become truly a big deal uh, with that release. So I think Google's model was simply to do that up front. You know, Google doesn't charge a lot for storage. So if you really want to use that service, uh, it depends on what you want it for, of course. But Let's just say for right now for like photo backup and photo sharing and so forth. Yeah. Actually, the Google stuff is very good. Well, what I do currently, and I would love, I would love something to automatically do that. And um, with SkyDrive, are you? Would you be in the next version of Windows? Are you going to be able to tell it to automatically back up these certain files or anything that goes into this drive? Or you got to manually do it but to SkyDrive? Yeah. Um, it should be possible because there's a SkyDrive app coming for Windows Vista 7 and 8 that will uh, allow you to access SkyDrive from the shell. Okay. So if you use, um, I mean, I haven't tested it. So if you if you use the Windows 8 uh, backup functionality like file history, mm -hmm. uh, I suppose you could point it at SkyDrive. That's not a very efficient way to do things. But The way I do it, there, I, there was actually an app. I think it's like if this, then that, something like that. Yeah, and I've told that app to whenever I let's say take an Instagram photo with my account, right? It will upload the Instagram photo to my Dropbox, right? And I've set it for all these different applications. Like I've set it for Facebook. If I upload a picture, just send it to uh, send it to my Dropbox. And yep. luckily, I did that because my phone actually my my Android phone crashed on me. It was totally acting up, and I wiped everything, and I totally forgot to back up the photos. And it decided that it's going to back on my photos automatically on uh, on Dropbox, and I was able to save a lot of my pictures. Yeah, because this I is a problem on Windows Phone right now because the only way you can get the full copies off of there is to connect it to a computer. I think it's called Ifit, F I F T T T dot com. That's the way to. That's the only way that I figured out how to do it with this device. But uh, I would love to see that integrated in <coughs> in SkyDrive and in the next version of Windows. Yeah. You know, something that, that kind of puts everything together. Yep. Uh, this is our Linux portion of the show. Now we're going to talk about Linux and the future of desktop Finally. computing. Uh, <laughs> actually, somebody actually messaged me and they said, um, with when Windows, when Windows uh, comes out on the tablet, Windows 8 comes out for the tablet, yep. how is that going to affect the Android market as far as Android tablets? And I said, what Android market? Yeah. What Android tablet? 
I don't well, think you know. We'll see, right? I mean, uh, Google supposedly is coming out with an Android tablet this year. It's supposed to have some kind of budget busting price. You know, maybe they're going to subsidize it to make headway in that market. But I mean, what? Is, let's say they do for one hundred ninety nine, and we've discussed this in the past. But let's say they talk. They, let's say they price yeah. this thing at one hundred ninety nine dollars. If it's well, not, if it's nowhere near the level of, you know, the iPad or or Windows phone, Windows uh, Windows eight on the tablet. And you you could probably get like an arm arm device for two ninety nine. Yep. I'm sure people are more willing to spend that hundred dollars and get something they're familiar with. I think yeah, right now uh, people sure. are. I mean, I would say you. even a couple hundred bucks. You know, not just familiar with, but um, has all of you know the all the app compatibility that you want and all the apps you want and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, full Microsoft Office and so forth. If I if I don't know anything about computers and you put a Windows. You know, let's say a Windows 8 computer uh, tablet in front of me, and you tell me that I have Windows on here and I could access my files and I could do whatever I was doing at, at home. Yeah. I will probably buy that over an iPad, right? Well, I don't know. You personally? Or not, not me, <laughs> but I'm saying, might, I'm saying, uh, you know, I'm saying people, someone, like, uh, people love iPads. I mean, I, I, I don't think the iPad is going away because of Windows 8 or anything. I, um, I think there's a market for this kind of product. I mean, we'll see. But I think it's going to. I think there's going to be a space for it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been messaging me telling me that they're waiting for Windows 8 and they're not getting a tablet because they're familiar with the platform and they kind of trust it over Android. Yep. Yep. I, I don't know anybody that has an Android tablet and they're happy with it. I, <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm being honest about that. My uh, daughter that want, uses an Android tablet uh, she to happy? play games and to draw pictures. Is she happy uh, with it? She's fine with okay. it. I mean, she likes it for that kind of stuff, right? So... The other night she asked me if uh, she said, is there a dictionary on this thing? And I said, I, I don't believe so. But I said, you could just go to the web and type in question mark to find whatever or go to you know, dictionary dot com or whatever. And she said, this thing has a web browser. <laughs> you know? And I think she was just confused by that. But uh, no, it, the Android tablet thing is terrible. But, you know, I think Android phones are terrible. So, yeah, I, it, tell me which one of these things is weirder. Right. The Android now accounts for 50% of all smartphones used in the United States. It's the dominant platform by far. It's not even close. It's awful. And now they have a tablet. And given how popular Android phones are, you would think that Android tablets would have taken off in some dramatic way. And these things have tanked in the market. So which one of those is weirder, right? The Why, fact you know, that Android phones have phone. taken off and Android tablets have not taken off. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. But why, why has it taken off? I mean, this is the thing. It's because they saturated the market. With Android phones, I, I think well, it's this, it's this weird number game, like it's this false, false uh, dominance that they have. They've saturated <laughs> every phone on the market with this, uh, and people bought it a because okay, the iPhone was not available it, on their platform on their on their carrier. Okay, that's no, that's no longer the case, right? But that's I mean, no longer the case. Can you make? Could you say that uh, the average selling price of an Android handset is significantly less than that of an iPhone? I don't think so, but is that? No, it's a, actually it's actually more than an iPhone in some cases. More than an iPhone. I pay three hundred dollars for this phone, three hundred bucks. Right. Uh, okay, in so some I, cases, I don't know what to tell you. I, I to me this is. I, I think, think both a couple of those things. things are crazy. I think there's a couple of things that go into play. One, there is this weird thing where people don't want to get an iPhone. Yeah, but come on, that's, that that also exists. That, those kind of people, that that's just. I'll, that's, I'll tell you. A, that's a segment of the population I don't even want to address. Yeah. I mean, okay, so it, I'll give you, you an example. You, you, you will you will do harm to yourself because you don't like a company. Yes, and I'll you tell know, you I'll like, tell you I, something. Like, whatever. I you know. I have someone that works for me, and last year they came to me and they said they want to get an iPhone. Yep. And I turned to him and I said, "Listen, if you get an iPhone, I'll buy it for you." Because <laughs> they were using this this old flip phone and it was awful. I said, "I'll buy you the iPhone." Sure. I'll cut you a check right now and I'll give you. $200, go buy an iPhone. They said, really? I said, yeah, but you have to buy an iPhone. I gave him the $200. He went to the store, and you know what he bought? He didn't buy an iPhone. He bought a, <laughs> he bought a Thunderbolt. Excuse me one second. And that was our, our, our sneezing break. We're back. Sorry. Uh, no, no, please. You're, 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 I'm glad you're here today. Uh, so he went, instead of getting the iPhone, he went and bought the Thunderbolt. And yep. he complains every day about this phone. And now, in order for the phone to actually work properly, he has a giant backpack 
on the phone. The phone is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the phone has become this yep. thick with battery extenders uh, and cases. That kind of thing. The, yep. It barely works. He gives me the phone. He tells me to fix it. And I ask him. I'm like, why did you not get the iPhone? He goes, I don't know. I just didn't want to get an iPhone. Yep. No, I, it's this weird sir, those thing. Those people are out there. There's no doubt about it. I, I, They're idiots. I, well, no, no. I mean, the, the iPhones are not perfect. No, uh, it's not perfect. But you're you're not buying it because it's an iPhone. You're not. You, I mean, you're, it's <laughs> See, not that I, you're. I think of it as more of a long term play. I mean, you're buying into a platform. Uh, There's a surrounding ecosystem of services and so forth. And Apple, you know, it's pretty good. It's it's really good. Uh, you know. Uh, you're not going to be lacking for things on the Apple side. I mean, I'll tell you why I bought this phone. I bought it because I need to be in the environment. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I made That's a push earlier this year to get Android stuff. I have uh, Android tablets. Uh, I've got uh, an Android phone, a new one. And I, I, God, I'm telling you, I hate all of it. I hate it. No, I, it's, I, it's not better than the iPhone. I mean, I'll tell you, the camera's no, not as not. good as the iPhone. And, I, and, and I, I, I prefer Windows Phone over the iPhone. I wish there was a Windows Phone tablet right right now. Uh, there isn't, so I use an iPad. But um, I, I, yes, if if it came down to iPhone and Android, there would be no contest. It's going to be iPhone every time. I had a problem with the phone where I had to um, kind of wipe everything out and re reinstall it because every time the phone started, applications started crashing, and it would it would do like a force crash, like a force close. I had to constantly do on everything. It was nonstop. <laughs> it was like behind. It was yep. almost like that error message on like Windows 95. It's like over and over and over again. Like yes, active X, X has crashed. That. Active X has crashed. Like that's what it was in Windows 98. Right. And I had to wipe everything out. And I'm thinking, I'm like, why? What does the person do when they don't really understand what this is? Like, what do you do, do? You know what? They do the same thing they did on Windows 10 years ago when they didn't know what it was. I mean, they freak out and I don't know. I But. Android is too complex for the same reason that Windows is too complex. It's just not designed for normal people. It's no. it was created because Android wanted to get into this market, not because there was some hole that needed to be filled, not because they were offering us some unique value. Yeah, I, 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 it just doesn't. It's unnecessary. I, I'll, I, I've said it many times. The iPhone is far far more advanced than than android and and people could send me emails saying like well you can't really multitask on it and you can't i'm like and my answer is well can you on your phone can <laughs> yeah. you on your iphone and you know that windows that windows thing like i've been smoked by windows yep if i went there with this phone to, to pull up the weather i would still be there trying to pull up the weather <laughs> right. i mean that that's how that's that's I mean, how i feel know, with the, android the, the humor there is that depending on you know if you were on an iphone they may not there may not actually be a way to have two weather displays on the homepage or whatever. But, you know, the problem with the the iPhone is you've got like these multiple screens of identical looking grids of icons. And it's just not very, you know, it doesn't scale, I guess would be the way. No, I, you know what I always feel like I'm doing with this phone when I when I like I'm always doing this because I don't know where to go. And right. I don't know if it's me that I personally can't get used to the phone for, for whatever reason. And this I've been using Android for the last, you know, three years. You know the number one reason you use a phone other than an iPhone is it has a camera button on it. And, uh, you know, the Steve Jobs fixation with no buttons is, like, so overwrought. I can't tell you how many times I picked up the iPhone and, you know, <laughs> squeezed every possible <laughs> surface on the side trying to find a camera button because you forget, you know, when you first I don't think – well, this doesn't have a camera button. It doesn't, no. really. No, no, hard, uh, no hard camera button. Uh, it's, oh, this is the Nexus thing. Yeah, yeah, no buttons at all, which is awful. Yeah, it's not like they were. I wonder, who, you know, if they were copying anyone on that design. <laughs> well, my yeah. biggest—I'll tell you—my biggest problem with this device, and this is a big device, I yeah. can't send a text message without hitting these the soft buttons on the bottom, and sure. it kicks me out of the text message, and it's every time because I guess it's like bad, if I'm hitting it's a bad design, like if I hit the space bar, I'll hit that other button always, and it'll just kick me right out. You know, one of the things I think Microsoft did right with Windows Phone was to specify that certain buttons have to exist and be and certain of those buttons have to be in certain places, right? So search and home uh, and back. Um, well, search, start and home. Hello. Search, <laughs> start and back. I'll have to be at the same place under the screen. Physical buttons or, you know, those kind of trans, what do you call those uh, buttons that are built? They're built into the hardware, but they're not like physical clickable buttons or whatever. Yeah. But they can't be part of the UI and uh, they can't be part of the software. Uh, they have volume buttons, there's a camera button, there's a power button, uh, two-step power button that does sleep mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Smart, you know. Um, that stuff is nice because it makes the transition from one phone to another very simple. You know, it always works the same way. 
Yeah, a sim simplicity does not exist with Android. And those things opinion. are right. I mean, there are things like uh, the back button, another thing I always miss on the iPhone. It drives me nuts. I mean, the, the back button is another thing that Android got right, you know, actually, that Apple didn't. Uh, and again, it all came out of some weird fixation with no buttons or as few buttons as possible. And, uh, well, we'll just have this really like, super simple navigational scheme all based around this one button. You know, yeah. Okay, that's well, cute. You know, but. and we're gonna see we're gonna see this change in in the next version of of iOS, right? The next version of iOS and the next version of the iPhone will be really what decides where this device is going, because they've kind we'll of maxed we'll out. I mean, so we'll see, right? I mean, you, or, or they might not even do anything drastic. I mean, that's that, what that's, I'm saying. Can you imagine? I mean, right? So the next iPhone will come out and they'll get rid of the home button or something. They'll actually have fewer buttons. I mean, yeah. Apple is certainly has a history of doing that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, they might. You're right. And and one company that could get away with well, it is I, Apple, I, right? Actually, and I'll tell you, uh, I was surprised with the Windows 8 spec for devices that they didn't have as many built-in buttons as are required on Windows Phone. So, for example, there's a start button or like what they call a Windows key button. And there's volume controls and, uh, you know, power button and so forth. But with that system, they're relying on these kind of unique edge UIs to, for different functionality. And um, I have to say, it's the, the problem with it is it's not intuitive. Mm -hmm. You don't know to try it. And the reason you don't know to try it is that none of these other touch systems do anything like that. But like the uh, gestures that you get in Mac OS X, if you use them on a, uh, like a trackpad or the built-in trackpad in your laptop, once you understand what they do, and you really have to be told. I mean, there's no way around it. They're, not, they're just simply not intuitive. But once you know about them, they actually work really well. So Windows Phone, or rather Win, Windows 8, in some ways has gone in a direction that's kind of uh, closer to Apple in the sense that there are fewer buttons. But mm -hmm. then they've, you know, it's, an it's a computer. It's an advanced system. Yeah. So they've built in these kind of uh, advanced gestures into the edges which i think are actually very effective but you know again you have to you have to know that they're there yes you do have to know that they're there um it is almost time to wrap up but i do want to talk about uh another one of our sponsors here at the gfq network and uh on what the tech and that's audible.com and paul is uh has an audible pick of the week and uh, so do I. So this, we do this uh, every week, and uh, that is the wrong lower third. There we go. <laughs> I wish I could yell at somebody, but I can't. I should have uh, put this. Oh, we don't have show notes. That's why. No show notes. I know. I know. Because <laughs> uh, we did the uh, just go, going, uh, I guess, off the cuff today. Uh, what is your pick of the week, Paul? So I had actually I, I mentioned this on, on Windows Weekly a while back, but I've actually been listening to it. And so I, I was actually going to mention it again there, but, but I'll mention it here instead because it's so awesome. Um, there is a uh, a fairly new, I think it's a month or two old, version of Dracula, right? The classic by Bram Stoker. Mm -hmm. But it is nar it's narrated by an all-star cast of actors uh, from the UK mostly. Tim Curry, Simon Vance, Ellen Cumming, people like that. And um, it's it's just awesome. Do you it's, know, it's, if I if I tried to find it, do you know what it would be? Yeah, it's just called, Dra well, just search for Dracula. And then, and then it's it's got a black oh, and red go. kind of logo, and it says Alan Cumming and Tim Curry on the. Uh, oh, here we go. This one. Yeah, it, it's it's fantastic. In fact, just play a little. Let's uh, let's play a little bit. Clip of it. It's great. Play. Count Dracula had directed me to go to the Golden Krona Hotel, which I found to my great delight to be thoroughly old-fashioned, for of course I wanted to see all I could of the ways of the country. I was evidently expected, for when I got near the door I faced a cheery-looking elderly woman in the usual peasant dress, white undergarment with long double apron, front and back of coloured stuff, fitting almost too tight for modesty. How long is it, Paul? Fifteen hours. Post, she bowed and said, yeah. This is, it's just, I mean, I, you know, Dracula, everyone knows Dracula, but Dracula, for whatever it's worth, despite its age, is an awesome story. It's, it's, a, it's, great, it's a great read. And this kind of reading because it's it's told in kind of a narrative story like uh, diary entries and so mm -hmm. forth people kind of telling the story of what happened uh it lends itself really well to an audiobook this is just an awesome it's just awesome the original price is 29.95 but you can get it for seven uh seven dollars and 49 cents but if you go to audibletrial.com slash gfq you can get a 30-day trial to audible which is uh one free book 
uh, at audible.com, which uh, that's more than enough. You got 15 hours of entertainment with one free book. Uh, my book this week, and I've, I've been on the zombie kick, Paul. <laughs> yep. And uh, I was actually a fan of uh, World War Z, which actually the movie's yeah. coming out. Uh, Max Brooks' uh, book uh, has a movie coming out, uh, and uh, they have um, they are also on Audible. And I b- read the book. The book was cool. Uh, and now uh, they are on Audible, and uh, here's a little selection from uh, World War Z. And, and in the end, isn't the human factor the only true difference between us and the enemy? You know why I like this one? Because there were different types of zombies. <laughs> That's I a great story, by the way. Yeah. I did read that when it came out. They could go underwater. Then was Plus, it's narrated by the author and who, some pretty famous actors. Exclamation so. of, we can't let these stories die. He does sound like his father, though, <laughs> Max. He does sound like Mel Brooks. Right. Uh, so that was my audible pick, World War Z, The Oral History of the Zombie War. Uh, and I wonder if the zombie survival, gu- yeah, it is too. That's interesting. The zombie survival guide is in there too. How are they doing that? Cause that wasn't really like a book. I know it's like a field manual. Yeah. It's like a manual. I'm curious on how they're doing that. Uh, but if you go to audible trial.com slash EFQ, you get one free audiobook at audible.com. Uh, I'm a big fan of these audiobooks, Paul, cause I like just listening to stuff. I'm a talk radio fan. So anything, uh, with talking. Is, is fine with me. <laughs> any yep. type of any type of speech. Uh, yeah, actually, he's not narrating uh, Zombie Survival Guide, which is interesting. But he's narrating this one. Yeah, the Dracula one is really cool too. Yeah, that's re- it is really a good one. Yeah, a lot of a lot. Of, well, there's a lot of narration in this one. So really cool, uh, Paul. That is uh, that is our the end of our show actually. So it's five oh seven. You are really sick. I'm gonna crawl back into my are, hole. Are you, how bad are you feeling right now? I don't know. It's not any worse. I mean, it's just last two days have been kind of tough, but I'll get there. Yeah, I'm just gonna go and, and drink myself to sleep now, and take a time little PM, and and hopefully I'll probably I'll forget be drinking about this tea. Guy. But yeah, yeah. You know, last night I I took uh, I was telling you before the show my allergies have been awful, and I took a Benadryl, and yep. not not like the the liquid kind, like the pill form, and it was like the daytime Benadryl, the non drowsy Benadryl. Uh, I, well, I hope you have HBO. I didn't sleep. I literally, I stared <laughs> yeah. at the ceiling and I didn't turn on the TV because I didn't, I didn't know that I took the daytime like until like four o'clock in the morning when I looked at the box and it said daytime. Right. And I didn't sleep till like seven o'clock in the I, morning. Yeah. And it was last miserable. Time I was, uh, well, not last time I was here. Well, the last year when I went to Colorado one time, I, I did the same thing. I took a bunch of this medicine that actually really worked uh, great, but I didn't realize it was daytime. And I literally spent the entire night awake like an idiot. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah, it wasn't until about three o'clock in the morning because I never get insomnia. Um, but sometime, yeah, three o'clock in the morning or so, it finally dawned on me to look at the packaging. You know what's going yeah, yeah, on, yeah. and uh, I blew it. No, I I, I have an awful, awful sleeping pattern. Uh, there are times that I'll sleep at like two o'clock in the morning, and times that I'll fall asleep at like eight. No, I have it, no problem weird. falling asleep, but it's I have like the. Yeah, I'm so clogged up, you know, last night, you know, you lay on one side, you're, so that side's all clogged up, and then you roll over, and then that's, it kind of moves over, and it's good stuff. It's, yeah, it's wonderful great. stuff. Yeah. Uh, check out Paul's website, windsupersite.com. Is it up now? Is it working? I, geez, I hope so. Uh, yeah. You got bombarded earlier. Yeah, it is working. There we go. Yeah, windsupersite.com. Uh, a lot of great reads here. Xbox 360 service update, spring 2012. Uh, so you go through the uh, the latest update, I guess, for the spring uh, I guess this one is all about the uh, the TV partners. Yeah, just three of them. Xfinity, uh, who is it? Xfinity, t- uh, Verizon. No, it's X. Well, the the updates are well, the Xfinity, new ones are Xfinity, Xfinity HBO, HBO Go, Go, and MLB right. TV. Well, you know what? Somebody was talking about the MLB and how much of a great feature this is on this device. Well, the the problem I have with MLB TV is it only works without a market games. You know, because they have all these lockouts, blackouts, or whatever. Um, I'm not particularly interested in watching like a Phillies game, you know, um, I, we happen to live in a great baseball town and we have awesome announcers. And so not being able, you know, not being able to access that stuff. I think it'd be kind of nice if I was on the road to have a, you know, MLB TV come up on the iPad while I was in a hotel room and be able to watch the game. But you actually, you know, you can't, it's not really. How yeah. Works, so. Yeah, so uh, great site, winsuperside.com. Also check out, uh, if you miss any portion of the show, you can go to our website, gfknetwork.com. And listen there. We have it posted within a couple hours. Also, we're on iTunes. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Subscribe to us on Zoom. 
We're on the BlackBerry, guys. You can subscribe to us on BlackBerry. The the three people that still have one uh, can subscribe to us. And uh, Stitcher uh, Radio on the go. We're on the Stitcher mobile app. And, of course, uh, Paul's app. That's on iOS on uh, and uh, Windows Phone, uh, the Paul Thorod app. You could listen over there, too. Uh, you know what? Go to the Paul Thorod app. Listen to us there. Uh, <laughs> and from myself and Paul, see you uh, next time on What the Tech. Good night, everybody.